Hello everyone, so today I'm going to create a popover like this with curved corners and a curve on the top of the rectangle and some elements. So first we are going to create another view with the name of rectangle with curved top view. And next we are going to create a custom shape in it. You can give it any name you want, extend it with shape and override the function path in it which is going to return us a path that contains the shape that we have created on that path. So first create a variable with the name of corner radius. I have kept a value of 30. If you do not want it to be so curved on the corners, you can reduce the value to 10 or 20 as well. So first we are going to move our path to a certain point, which is basically the minimum of X and Y, which is the top left corners you can see on the picture that i'm showing you at the bottom left of the screen so this is how the coordinates are arranged in ios so we are returning the path now we are adding a line this is going to be a top line so we are creating a line from before the maximum x minus corner radius with the y coordinate as minimum of y. So wherever there is a 1 in the picture that I'm showing you here corresponds to the maximum value and 0 as the minimum value. So next I'm going to add here a quad curve that is going to basically draw a curved rounded corner. So this is our top line with rounded corner. So whenever we are uh, moving with a minimum value, we are going to add the corner radius. Otherwise, we are going to subtract the corner radius so that we do not exceed the limits of X and Y. So here I am again creating the right line with rounded corner. So we have a bottom right corner with it and a line on the right side. So I am adjusting all the values. If you look at the reference picture, you will be able to see that how we are adding it. So instead of adding the corner radius in X, we are subtracting it because we have reached the maximum limit of X. And you have seen here that this kind of a shape is formed at this point. Path is automatically going to close the points wherever we have left the R drawing. So here I'm creating a bottom line. So bottom line is created. After that, I'm going to create a basically rounded corner for the R bottom left side. So this is the bottom left corner. So it corresponds to the minimum of X and maximum of Y. So these are the points. And then since it is going to be curved upwards, so corner radius will be subtracted from Y. So this is the control point. Control point is basically at which point we are going to curve the two points. So we have added a curve. So R bottom left side curve is also drawn now we are going to draw the right side line and the top curve so i've added another quad curve but since the line is not drawn the curve is not that perfect so i need to add a line here the right line the right side of this rectangle so i'm going to add a corner radius to the minimum of x and then we are going to move to minimum of y. So this is basically our left line with top left rounded corner. And this is basically the bottom line that I mentioned as the left line. So our rectangle is complete. Now we are going to add a top curve to this rectangle. I've colored it green so that it is in contrast with the background and it is easily visible on the screen. Later, I'm going to change its color to white with the background with a slightly black opacity. So here I am setting some of the values like mid-x, which is basically half of the rect width. 
the width variable y offset, which is a constant value, which means that how high the curve should be, like the height of the curve, and then a control width, which is going to control uh, basically the width of our curve. So the first point is the two. So here I'm going to show you another interesting picture, which is going to show you what these variables are. So we have for drawing of each curve, we are going to have three variables. One is a two variable, another one is two control points. So two control points are going to control curve at two points. One is the starting point and another is basically the peak in the first case. And two is basically the start point of that curve from where we are going to start drawing the curve. So here I'm mentioning two control one and control two, and then we are going to draw the other half of the curve, which is going to move downwards. So two one is going to the, be the, basically the starting point and control three and control four are going to be the control points that are going to control the curve of that downward motion of our basically curve. So next I'm going to draw these curves and you are going to see that how they are going to look like. So you have seen here that in control one and control two, we have the same X point because we are make, moving the curve along the Y axis. We are drawing the curve along the Y axis. And in the third and fourth control, the X axis are the same and the Y axis are changed and inverted as compared to control two because we are then moving downward. So control two will corresponds to control three in terms of Y position. So this is how the curve will be drawn. So once our view is done, I'm going to add here an asset and a color. I'm going to show you here the hex code of this color. Uh, you can choose any color you want using the color picker here and create a color here. This is going to help us to use this color set inside the code. So here I'm initializing this color so that I'll be able to use it inside this variable name color. Normally in the big apps, color sets are used to define the color scheme of the app so that we do not need to define a color again and again, and we can simply pick and choose from our color set. And if we want to change the scheme, it is very easy to change the colors inside your assets folder. So I have created a little bit of a shadow frame width and height and encapsulated it in a Z stack because the previous, basically your background or your view will be inside the uh, Z stack background. So here I am setting the frame width and height of the image and then I'm going to set it with an offset. So a offset is going to help us to move it from top to bottom in an animated fashion. If you do not want to apply the animation, forget about the offset property. So here I'm setting it a default top value and a bottom value and next I'm going to move it with animation whenever these UI elements are going to appear on the screen. So here I'm going to write the animation function. We are going to create the ease and out duration very small because we want to instantly animate it. If you want to move the animation in a slow fashion, you can increase the value of the duration. Now I'm setting the top offset to minus 150. How this value is evaluated is basically you are going to try it uh, with different values and see where the image goes on the screen. Next, I'm going to create a V stack that is going to contain two texts and a, an eight stack of buttons. Uh, since the spacing between the V stack elements is different, so I have encapsulated two buttons and the detail text inside another V stack. So I have changed the text. Next, I'm going to create a frame over it so that the text is basically has some padding on the sides and it is aligned with the buttons. So just create a small width. Next, I'm going to add here another offset because our text is going to move from bottom of the screen to this point. So we are going to 
again add uh, an offset in the y direction with some animation just like the we have applied to the image with a value that we have predetermined with trial and error so this is the value i'm setting here these values so that the animation is not played at the start once we are done with the ui we are going to move it to the default values next i'm going to create here two buttons one button is going to be of white color with some colored border other one is going to be a filled button so these are very simple ui elements just copy and paste this code and um, let's see how it's going to look like the major challenge in this tutorial is basically the creation of the background rectangle with a curved top. And this is a very common design for popovers. And I hope you are able to understand it with the help of a reference picture that I have attached. Very simple, you just need a little bit of a concentration while creating it. So this is how we are going to create these two buttons. We do not need an overlay here, a simple background with a rounded rectangle, no stroke and just a fill of color here to make it green according to the color scheme of this popover. Moving back to the default values, and next, I'm going to add a little bit of a spacing in the V-stacks that I've shown you earlier why we have created two V-stacks. So first, run this view inside the simulator by copy-pasting it in place of the content view inside R at the rate of main entry point. So this is how it's being displayed and animated. So let's create a little bit of spacing. This is all for this tutorial. Do not forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. I'm going to create some more tutorials for interesting popovers in the coming weeks. So stay tuned.